okay here we go my first video hmm I've been waiting a long time to get into this subject and this is something that's been driving me nuts ever since I started to read about it and obviously we live in a age where social justice warriors versus the alt-right is a big thing and it sort of bled out into the Lovecraft universe in a way which resulted in a few things that have sort of really okay frankly pissed me off uh, but first I think we should just get a little bit of context here basically the World Fantasy Award was this well was this thing it's like Oscars I suppose for uh, fantasy science fiction mm, weird tale type uh, stories and the award that is given this is actually the award and then there was an author Octavia Butler, Butler uh, a black woman from America she got very upset and I think also this one here got very very upset that Ruff Lovecraft is a racist uh, anyway okay to be fair he did make this this poem called on the creation of niggers which <laughs> It is frankly quite uh, brutal, you know. I can understand exactly their feelings, you know. If if I was in their place, sure. And then there was also this author. I think he kind of started the petition. I think he's he's a white guy from what I remember reading. Um, but they got very very buttered, and you know we live in this age of political correctness. And they had to change it, so they changed it to something else. I'm not even sure what. But it's no longer this guy. Poor guy. Oh, look at him, he's so sad. <laughs> but then, basically, S.T. Joshi, thankfully, thankfully, he is not buying into this, this blue pill mentality bullshit. Uh, he called the decision a craven yielding to the worst sort of political correctness, and it is. Uh, it's not... The award isn't about his personal beliefs, you know. It really isn't. It is about what he contributed to literary world and what he contributed is in his in his genre in his subgenre um, if you want to call it weird fiction you want to call it horror in general because I think Lovecraft is the best horror author although you know I'm not just blind to other types of horror I love all types of horror not just Lovecraft in horror but it really does show the mentality of these people that you know he needs to be crucified. It kind of reminds me of, you know, the Cultural Revolution in China, where anything, regardless of its its value to the culture, where it comes from, uh, its impact on the society, that doesn't really matter. What matters is, it's not correct anymore. It's not politically correct anymore. It has to go. So instead of these authors, these, uh, ah, who are they? You know, the two black ones uh, and that white journalist guy. Uh, they couldn't put it past them. They couldn't just think like, well, okay, this guy comes out like... <laughs> he was born in like 1890. Okay, and he developed as a... He's quite a weird individual. So, you know, if you haven't noticed, weird individuals tend to have weird views. You know, extremist views. It's just... I don't know, it's the plague of an artist call it what you want but no they got their feelings hurt and had to be changed and oh my god okay to be fair I can kind of understand their feelings uh, well I mean if I was black and I read the line a beast they wrought in semi-human figure filled it with vice and called the thing a nigger obviously I'm not going to have very warm feelings to the person who wrote that you know, because you imagine yourself like, okay, I'm a black science fiction author, right? I have achieved a lot in my field. I'm getting this award. And now you imagine, well, what what is Lovecraft going to think of me, you know? What, is he going to like think I'm subhuman? Well, maybe he would, sure. But nonetheless, I think basically in short, what he achieved as a writer outweighs his views as a racist okay um, but the thing that ha is happening now which is kinda funny is that things are developing that we are seeing books that are being written 
um, that have came out recently and have been quite lauded, praised even. Uh, if we look here at Goodreads, this is the book that I'm mainly looking at here. Okay, 3.8 is average for Goodreads because most reviews seem to be positive on Goodreads. Uh, there's also this one, The Battle of Black Tom, also quite decently rated there, and Lovecraft Country. This one is actually out in my local bookstore, which is saying a lot because <laughs> they have like no respect for Lovecraft. They got like two books, two little anthology paperbacks, and this huge thing put on display. But the thing about these books is that they are completely undermining what Lovecraftian horror is. Okay? Now just forget for a moment, if you can, turn off the, the social justice engine in your head, if you're even that type of person. I'm hoping, hoping you aren't, considering you're watching this channel, but put that out of mind for a second and just think what Lovecraftian horror is. Because that is a legitimate format of... It's a legitimate format of literature, right? Uh, we have all anthologies. It's a subculture now. And... This came along. August 3rd. This was very recent, as I said. But basically, this book is about this author here, Nick Mamatas. He's a, a Greek, Greek author. I don't know about him, but I, I had to Google him quickly to find out what he's about. But basically, this guy has big issue with the Lovecraft subculture, of which I'm a part, as which, you know, uh, there's other Lovecraftians out there. We're all a part of it, right? But this guy doesn't like it. No, 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 no. He does not like it at all. That Lovecraftians are apparently racist now, and also the big buzzword of that is happening lately in the internet is can you see uh, misogynists yes you see we are racist sexists and we are misogynists now as well because we like Lovecraft I don't know this guy is apparently also a Lovecraftian fan um, but basically this whole book is about pointing out the flaws in the subculture you know um, in short, I would have to say that, ah, so in short, this book is about this, about the zealous cult, you know, of fandom that sprung up around him, you know, uh, it's not the first time that, uh, fandoms have been attacked for being misogynistic or racist or some shit. We've seen that with uh, the Gamergate issue. I've uh, seen that in comic books. Um, like when there was backlash when they made Thor female, because apparently now Thor is female. And when they made uh, the new Captain America black, a black teenage girl or something like that. Personally, I, I've got no issue with that at all because it's a new character. It's not like retconning the character to suit the you know, current views of today. But as I said before, this is really missing the whole point of what Lovecraftian horror is about. Lovecraftian horror is about man and his relation, or her relation, okay, excuse me, man's relation to everything else in the universe and his insignificance and how basically nothing is there for man, okay, there's no God, there's no afterlife. It's just these entities which don't give two shits about us, who are inconceivable, and when they are conceivable, it's <laughs> probably have been better if we didn't think about them or know about them. And it's how disconcerting these these uh, realities are, these these uh, realizations, you know. If you take, for example, um, uh, the, the statement of Randolph Carter. Uh, the protagonist goes down into the depths of a catacomb and then he reports back to Randolph Carter who's waiting outside on a wi on a, a wire phone that there are like legions of these un of course undescribed creatures beneath the earth you know just countless it's, it's, it's massive 
and it's like, oh shit. Okay. But at this point, at no point is it relevant what sex Randolph Carter is. It's irrelevant his race, if Randolph Carter is black, if he's a woman, even if he is transgender, because hey, there's even now Lovecraft in media, media focusing on transgender people, hey, for that. Um, it's not about that, but these books, I'm talking about Lovecraft Country, Ballad of Black Tom, I Am Providence now, and also this Heroes of Red Hook. These, these books are posing a problem. To use social justice language, it is problematic. Yes, it really is. I think it is. Why? These books all have something in common. This one too. Well, it's not really a book yet. It's still a, a Kickstarter thing. Uh, I think it's going to take the form of a graphic novel. I'm not sure. Um, whatever. The point is, these books have one thing in common. And that is, they focus on the character. They focus on the race of the character, specifically. Or the sex of the character. Or their status as a citizen. Or who they like to fuck. Or what they have decided to become, you know. On a side note, I really don't care. I mean, I made a comment there previously, and it's maybe it sounded a bit harsh, but honestly, I, I do not give a shit if you want to be a woman or a man or whatever it's your body your life you do what you want but in these stories they make identity politics the focus okay for example in this one i believe it was about a uh, a black guy uh atticus Tur turner yeah i think that is him and he about he, he goes through um uh, the Lovecrafting country, you know, so sort of the Arkans and the Kingsports, all that sort of stuff. The New England scene, I guess. But, oh my god, it's set in the racist times. Oh shit. Well, can't have that. So, it's a focus about the character rather than his relation to the horrors in the world. They, that's what they make the book about. Uh, Ballad of Black Tom, I think, is also. If I'm correct, it is sort of like um, it sort of inverts uh, the the horror at Red Hook, in that it makes it everything from the perspective of one of the characters living in Red Hook, which is why I think it's set in uh, New York. Um, I'm not sure, but I think that's the one I'm thinking of. Oh yeah, yeah, Red Hook. Um, and it makes it. If I, I mean, I, I breezed through it. I read the review a bit more in detail than this one and it's basically about whether Black Tom feels this um, desire to align with humanity because humanity is racist against him so he decides to go for the cultists because uh, obviously in uh, uh, the Red Hook horror story from uh, Lovecraft uh, there's a cult obviously and the police you know clamp down hard so you know <laughs> It's obviously hard not to think about the Black Lives Matter uh, and the, that the black people getting shot like crazy in America by police. Obviously that's an issue, but I don't think it's an issue that should be brought into Lovecraft and fiction. Now, the same thing goes for this as well. Because, I mean, it's, it's basically, it's not about race, but I mean, female. Why, why is this an issue? That... Does having a vagina sort of change how you view a shoggoth or something? You know, I don't know. But apparently, you know, we're uh, misogynists, so I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it does. Maybe um, you get triggered <laughs> if you see the tentacles because they're kind of phallic. I don't know. <laughs> how the hell that is supposed to make sense? Um, but, but yeah. Okay, I basically just want to summarize here a little bit because uh, I don't want to do this video to go on too long. Here we are basically getting crucified by this asshole who thinks that the community of Lovecraft is it's misogynistic and it's problematic. It needs to be 
wiped clean of all traces of anything remotely racist and and needs to be injected with you know these characters who is most defining feature is <laughs> you know is, is who they sleep with what they what's what's in their pants bullshit like that look the thing is this when William Dyer the character from uh, at the mountains of madness when he goes to these mountains and he discovers these elder things and they wake up and he has to sort of piece together the history of earth and what these things are at no point does it matter if William Dyer is black it doesn't it doesn't matter if he's white it doesn't matter if he's black it doesn't matter if William Dyer <laughs> is a transsexual it doesn't matter if William Dyer William Dyer is actually Wilhelmina Dyer it does not matter what matters is that this character is serves as, as like a gorge for he represents humanity humanity facing these horrific realities that is what the story in essence is all about what most what 99% of, of Lovecraft is about it doesn't matter how does changing William Dyer to a, a black character how does that matter or a woman or whatever how does that improve the story how does it I mean is it a problem that William Dyer is presumably white no it isn't however in this day and age it's it's unacceptable you can't have it because people are going to get offended they are going to cry about it and authors Lovecraftian authors are going to produce things like this over and over and over again okay to be honest I think they will always be in the minority I think the you can't change the majority this is like a while ago I read this article about uh, the metal community also facing some backlash because it's very uh, male centric <laughs> like you go to a metal concert it's like 80% guys majority metal bands all guys so that's problematic you need to have it all 50-50 blah 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 but that failed miserably and despite the fact that Lovecraft got screwed over in the awards uh, I don't think he'd even really care to be honest <laughs> he didn't really care about publicity and least of all of awards I'm sure but I think these things will always be the minority thankfully because Lovecraftians we aren't like a centralized you know grouping you know we are these uh, I don't know how I don't want to sound too edgy here but you know Lovecraftians tend to be you know individuals and these reclusive types and you know not the most social uh, colorful butterflies with a vibrant community and you know we have our conventions every now and then uh, Lovecraft Film Festival and that sort of thing but you can't really expect to inject this shitty ideology into it and it's going to change things no and frankly I think that sales will reflect this I predict that this will not do well neither this nor this and this thing will just remain a kickstarter project with a few people being interested in it frankly 420 four, 482 okay big deal well done uh, but yeah that's the end of my video really this is something I wanted to get off my chest for a long time now um, I don't actually want to discuss race very much at all on this channel because I frankly find it tedious and tiresome um, you know I, I like Lovecraft for the escapism and to look beyond humanity you know it, it's humanity versus the world it shouldn't be about racial issues and bullshit like that even though they are relevant issues yes racism is a problem it's a relevant issue in uh, today's society still um, and so are other forms of discrimination uh, like against gay people or uh, you know against females in third world countries and that sort of thing but there's a time and place for everything and Lovecraft is not the time and place